There are few things in the world that would ever make me feel sorrow for an insect. Their lifespan is an in second and their brain functions are just below that of your typical Twitter user. But then I saw this documentary clip showcasing the famous carnivorous plant, the Venus flytrap. And for whatever reason, the editor here decided to create the most soul-crushing, depressing cries for these dying flies. I swear to god, someone on that team really, really loved insects and they were tired of the slander they were getting, so they decided to make us all feel bad for them. And it kind of worked. But on top of that, the entire clip, and honestly any footage of a Venus flytrap, really should make you feel lucky to be a big, strong mammal. A great ape, if you will. Because due to our immense size and intellect, we will never have to worry about these biological landmines. They're just real ones in some areas. And even though whilst in my youth that former fact was still very much up in the air, I'll be quite frank with you, I thought Venus flytraps in quicksand would play a much more significant role in my adult life than depression and work, but I digress. I now understand that it is scientifically impossible for any carnivorous plant to grow to such a size that it could pose a threat to humans or anything above the weight of an insect. But that was until one day, while browsing through YouTube in about 2019 or so, I got recommended by the algorithm this video, and it introduced a rather terrifying idea, as it would accuse the bramble plant, the one that grows blackberries and has those rather annoying thorns, of being a sheep killer. The title of the video is World's Biggest Carnivorous Plant Catches a Whole Sheep, and it will be linked in the description if you want to go and watch it for yourself. And and on display here, we have two sheep, both of which are wrapped in the vines of the bramble plants, unable to move until being cut free by a farmer. Now the farmer, who is also narrating these unfolding events, basically asserts that this isn't just a one-off odd occurrence, it happens rather frequently, and it is premeditated on the bramble's behalf. He says that the brambles are actually hunting the sheep like any other carnivorous plants, and while doing it very differently, differently than your typical Venus flytrap, it is hunting nonetheless. Just a quick side note here, I did a little bit of research, it technically would be a proto-carnivorous plant as it can't digest the food properly in the same way a Venus flytrap or a pitcher plant can, but in that definition a proto-carnivorous plant is still responsible for killing whatever it caught. I will probably continue just calling it a carnivorous plant though because it's easier to say. Now I think the best thing to go over here first is the one that a lot of people are probably really confused by and that is how does a bramble catch a sheep because and i don't know if you know this but sheep tend to eat vegetation and you know plants are vegetation in a way so surely this is this is kind of a odd reversal of the food chain well, in the footage provided here, we can clearly see just how stuck the sheep are, and while I'm no sheep scientist, I have come to the conclusion that if the farmer had not intervened, those sheep would have eventually died of dehydration or exhaustion. The brambles, as you probably know, have thorns, but these thorns aren't like other thorny plants. They don't stick straight up, they kind of curve and arc backwards. This still provides the plant with a necessary defense, but it also has an added benefit of allowing it to quote-unquote grab a hold of anything such as the rather thick wool of a sheep, and if it got wrapped around a fair bit, then it would be even harder for that sheep to break free. These fawns are also located all over the fines, increasing the chance of contact. So already you have a rather large fining plant with a lot of fawns that seem perfectly designed to grab onto a sheep's wool and tangle them up. Plus in addition, sheep are rather unfortunately stupid as once they're fully engulfed by the bramble, they'll just kind of stand there until they die. So yeah, not, not the most intelligent animals. 
Sorry to all the sheep lovers out there. So the sheep wanders over, maybe even drawn to the plants by the delectable berries the bramble produces, and at some point while near it, it gets caught in one of the bramble's finds. And if this initial snag on the sheep's wool is secure enough, and so long as there are other parts of the bramble to interact with it further, then as soon as it starts struggling, it will only ensure that it gets more and more ensnared until it is thoroughly stuck. At which point it will be left with the unenviable destiny of just standing there and dying like an idiot. So that is kind of the how it happens, but you could just say, well, that's just a coincidence that the Bramble's fawns happen to be really good at catching sheep, and obviously they are gonna grow near where sheep are, so what's the big deal? And I just wanna say to you coincidence people, on the same day that Trump almost got JFK'd, I happened to stub my toe really, really hard on my desk, harder than I'd ever stubbed it before. There are no coincidences. There is a motive for everything, even the brambles, because they in fact do have one. As we all know from biology, plants eat the sun and the dead. That is what sustains them. The dead part is what we care about here, because the carcass of a sheep lying in the soil near a bramble bush would provide it with potentially years upon years of nutrients. A decaying corpse of a large animal, while not being 100% necessary for survival, would be a massive bonus for any plant, and the brambles just so happen to be able to benefit from it, and also have the tools to kill it. And that is kind of the crux of the argument when it comes to whether or not the bramble is a carnivorous plant. It has a motive, and it has the tools. But still, there are a lot of counterpoints for this argument, and one of the main ones is something you might have already picked up on, and that is the fact we don't have a lot of sources that this ever really happens. We have four cases to be exact, the two sheep in the first part of this video, and the two sheep in the second part. Which with such a small number and all of them happening in the same location, you can't really come to a proper conclusion. However, the farmer in this video does say something rather interesting. And as any sheep farmer will tell you, brambles are very successful at this. They can and do kill thousands of sheep every year. If that's true, that thousands of sheep all across the country are routinely killed by brambles, then it gives a lot of credence to the fact that the brambles are actively designed to hunt sheep, and therefore carnivorous. So, I did a little bit of research into this claim to see if it's somewhat accurate, and whilst I did find a fair few images of sheep stuck in brambles, I couldn't find any source which stated that thousands of them are dying each year to the plant. Even though we do now have more evidence that additional sheep are caught by the brambles, it doesn't really correspond with what you'd expect if there was a predatory plant living in England. However, I can still understand if you'd want to make the argument that they are in fact still carnivorous, they just don't catch one very often. But I'm gonna be honest, the amount of times it happens is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a bigger issue which we're gonna talk about now. First and foremost is the fact that the brambles are only effective against the common typical sheep we're all familiar with, the ones with the really thick woolen coats as that wool is what enables them to be tangled up so easily. Thing is though, the sheep of today are not natural animals. They have been bred and domesticated solely for the purpose of growing as much wool as possible. They are nothing like their wild ancestors who sport significantly shorter coats and who Bramble would have no effect against. And it's not just the fact that the common sheep has more wool for the Brambles to latch onto, it's also their docile nature created through domestication which has caused them to seemingly lose some of their survival instincts. Hence their inability to break free and apparent desire to just accept their fate. 
Now, not to make this video too exciting or anything, but I did read through the history of British wool in my research for this video. It claims that British sheep have been used for the creation of wool all the way back in 1900 BC. Then, when the Romans invaded in 55 BC, it specifically claims that they brought bigger sheep over to England, and presumably those ones started being bred for their wool. Now, I can't say for certain when in history a sheep would have been bred whose wool would have been thick enough that a bramble could encase it in its finds and potentially trap and kill it. But what I think is a fair estimate, based on the fact that we've been breeding sheep specifically for their wool for a very, very long time, that for roughly 1,000 years, the bramble plant and a particularly woolly sheep would intermingle. So because there's no other records of brambles being carnivorous to any other type of animal, it's only ever sheep, that means we need to ask an important question. Is it possible in a thousand years for the bramble to go from a normal, sun-loving plant to a carnivorous monster? Because at some point in history, there would appear a sheep whose wool was a lot thicker than all of the others, and it would get caught in bramble and die. Is it possible that the bramble would evolve to take advantage of this? And this is where things get weird, because no, probably not. While Rapid Evil Evolution is absolutely a thing. A plant going from a normal plant to a carnivorous plant is a massive leap, and 1,000 years in evolution terms is not a long time. As well, though, it's fair to say that the bramble wouldn't really have to change too much, but we'll get more into that in just a little bit. There is actually one smoking gun here, and that is located in the fawns of the bramble plant. If, for example, a thousand or two thousand years ago, the bramble didn't have those backwards-facing fawns which seem tailor-made to catch a sheep, and instead just had those straight-pointing-out ones, then that would be a massive indicator that they evolved in order to catch sheep sheep. Unfortunately, though, I could find absolutely nothing supporting this, and again, it does make sense. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years, in terms of evolution, that is not a long time at all, and getting backwards-facing fawns, that would actually take a decent chunk of evolution. But okay, then we'll look at it on the other hand. They always had these backwards-facing fawns, and so they were always effective at catching sheep. But that then completely disproves that they're carnivorous, because if they had them before the woolly sheep appeared, that would mean it's just a coincidence, really. They just so happened, for whatever reason, to have this adaptation, and it just so happened to be good at killing sheep. Therefore, you can't really class them as carnivorous, just kind of lucky. Like, they've just been vibing no problems for however long, and then suddenly a random sheep comes up to their bush and dies in it, and they're just like, hey, sweet, that's that's a nice bonus. I'm, I'm not really going to go after them because I can't, because I'm a plant, but hey, that's, that's pretty nice. <laughs> It's kind of hard for me to put it into words what I mean here, but I think the best way to explain it is every other carnivorous plant, they evolved to catch and kill. That is their one mission in life. The brambles did not have that mission. They just got lucky. Hold on, actually, I just came up with a far better metaphor. The bramble plant is the barbed wire of the vegetation world. Both of them are very much capable of entangling a sheep, and while admittedly only one of them gets benefit from it, neither of them are doing it maliciously. They just happen to be good at it. So, in conclusion, to by far the stupidest and most boring video I have ever made, a bramble plant does in fact have the capabilities to kill a sheep. It is also able to gain benefit from said dead sheep. However, the plant itself is, in my opinion, not carnivorous. And while that is incredibly boring, and I, I really wish it isn't true, like, if you have a good explanation that can, like, counter all of my points here, please do leave a comment. I will make a part two. I want to believe that this thing is carnivorous, but I just don't. Because while I do not understand it, I am a man of science, not God. And the Brambles as well only respect the former. They got incredible 
incredibly lucky in the evolution's arm race because some random big monkey was like, mm, yes, fluffy, me going to take, me going to shave, me going to make it grow more, and then me going to shave again, rinse and repeat until we have an abomination. And that abomination just so happened to be weak against the bramble. I feel like I've been repeating myself a lot in this video, so I'm just going to end it here. Brambles, not carnivorous. If you liked the video, please make sure you subscribe. I have proper content coming out in the next few weeks. I promise it's actually going to be normal. Please do not judge this entire channel based on this one video. I literally had to make it in like three days. And I believe that is just about it. Shout out to all the sheep dumb enough in the world who actually make a debate on whether or not a non-moving plant is carnivorous carnivorous and my most humble apologies to all the bramble lovers out there as this video will probably be a thorn in your side.